Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about side effects of alpha blockers. Alpha blockers can be classified as non-selective alpha blockers as well as selective alpha blockers. Non-selective alpha blockers can act on the alpha 1 receptors which are expressed on various types of smooth muscles including vascular smooth muscle. Similarly, they can block the alpha 2 receptors which are presynaptic in nature which inhibit the release of neurotransmitters. Now these non-selective alpha blockers can act on the alpha 1 receptors thereby they can produce vasodilatation and they can also block the alpha 2 receptors so that they can increase the secretion of neurotransmitters. In case of catecholamines, the excess release of these neurotransmitters increase the heart rate resulting in the tachycardia. That's why non-selective alpha blockers produce more tachycardia compared with selective alpha blockers. So we have two drugs within this non-selective category phenoxybenzamine as well as phentolamine both are having the suffix amine they are, they are the amine derivatives. On the other hand selective alpha blockers can block a particular subtype of alpha receptors. For instance they can be classified as alpha 1 blockers which are ending with the suffix josine. We have the drugs like prozosine, doxajosine, terajosine, similarly alphajosine. all these are selective alpha 1 blockers. Similarly, if you have the drugs can block the alpha 2 receptors, we have the drugs like yohimbine, idajoxan. These drugs are therapeutically not useful because they produce a complex type of pharmacological effects and particularly they can increase the psychotic symptoms. Still we have another category of drugs which block the alpha 1 A receptors which are expressed on the bladder as well as prostate tissue. We have one of the drugs tamsulosine which is particularly used in the treatment of bladder enlargement. So these alpha blockers can be used in the treatment of hypertension, particularly in the treatment of severe hypertension where they can reduce the blood pressure by directly producing the vasodilatation. That's why they can reduce the risk of angina and other cardiovascular disorders. That's why they are preferred in the emergency treatment. And these alpha blockers can also be used in the conditions like BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia or hypertrophy where there is an enlargement of prostate tissue resulting in the increased urinary frequency and urinary agency. Again in such conditions we can use alpha blockers and in the conditions like Raynaud's disease where there is increased vasoconstriction at the periphery particularly at the hands, feet and toes. Again in such conditions alpha blockers can be used to produce a vasodilatation. Similarly in the conditions like pheochromocytoma which is a adrenal producing tumor. When this tumor is surgically removed it can release the catecholamines which can act on the alpha 1 receptors expressed on vascular smooth muscle. Otherwise they can act on the beta 1 receptors expressed on cardiac muscle. If they act on the alpha 1 receptors they can produce vasoconstriction leading to systemic hypertension which should be avoided. Similarly they can act on the beta 1 receptors which increase the rate of contraction. That's why in surgical removal of pheochromocytoma alpha 1 blockers are used to block the stimulation of alpha 1 receptors. Similarly, beta blockers can be used to block the actions on cardiac muscle. In this way, alpha blockers are useful in surgical removal of pheochromocytoma. As well as they are also useful in the diagnosis where they block the alpha 1 receptors. Now the side effects of alpha blockers are related with their vasodilatory actions. These alpha blockers mainly block the vascular smooth muscle resulting in the vasodilatation which produce a various types of side effects which can be remembered in easy way. So alpha blockers can produce cranial vasodilatation resulting in the increased headache as well as some dizziness in the patients. They can produce systemic vasodilatation which reduce the blood pressure resulting in postural hypotension. This postural hypotension which is also called as orthostatic hypotension where the blood pressure is not increased with change in the posture resulting in few of the symptoms such as dizziness, confusion and syncope fainting sensation in the patients. So all these are the side effects of alpha blockers because of postural hypotension. Similarly alpha blockers can produce nasal vasodilatation because of this they can reduce the clearance of nasal pathway resulting in nasal congestion. That's why alpha 1 agonists are used as nasal decongestants whereas alpha 1 blockers can produce nasal congestion. Similarly alpha blockers can produce arterial vasodilatation which is detected by baroreceptor reflex and when this Perfusion pressure is reduced, they can send the signals to the CNS where it can release the catecholamines. These catecholamines can increase the sympathetic activity. 
Now the catecholamines can act on the heart so that they can increase the rate of contraction. In this way, arterial vasodilatation can increase the heart rate, which is not a direct action, which is a reflex action. That's why another side effect of alpha blockers is the reflex tachycardia. Similarly, these drugs can produce cavernosal arterial vasodilatation, which results in erection of penis for longer periods, leading to some failure of ejaculation. And it can also produce some priapism, the pain during the erection because of failure of ejaculation. Other side effects of alpha blockers mainly include blooded vision and upper respiratory tract infections such as bronchitis, pharyngitis, even they can produce constipation by reducing the gastric motility. So these are the other side effects that can be observed with alpha blockers. But the main side effect of alpha blockers are all related with their vasodilatory actions. They can produce cranial vasodilatation resulting in headache and dizziness. They can produce systemic vasodilatation resulting in postural hypotension leading to dizziness, confusion and syncope. They can produce nasal vasodilatation resulting in nasal congestion. They can produce cavernosal arterial vasodilatation resulting in failure of ejaculation and priapism. They can produce arterial vasodilatation leading to stimulation of baroreceptor reflex and release of catecholamines which produce reflex tachycardia. All these are the side effects of alpha blockers which can be easily remembered just by remembering their effect they produce vasodilatory response. So that's about the side effects of alpha blockers. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.